What's up guys? Today I'm going to teach you five core tricks that all the pros use. And you have my personal guarantee that after watching this entire video and learning each of these five tricks that your songs will be at least 20% more interesting. The more interesting we can get your music to be, the more Spotify and SoundCloud will boost your music and get you more fans and listeners because they will notice that people are spending more time on your music and replaying it and listening to the whole songs all the way through and that's what you're going to want to grow your fan base. Trick number one is called spread voicing and it's how we take our chords from their natural basic form and make them more interesting, spread more throughout the piano roll, and more fun to listen to all around. So I have a basic chord progression I'm going to play for you real quick. So you can hear it's kind of cheesy and basic, but not for long. So the first thing I do with every chord progression is I put a bass line down into its own octave. And this will give us better usage over the piano roll. So I'm going to take the bottom notes of the chords, which are always the bass line, paste them, and drag them down to their own octave. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spread these guys around and make them more fluid and less cheesy. So what I, when I'm doing this, I try to imagine like I'm playing the chords with my hands, where would my fingers go? Well, I certainly wouldn't have a finger way up here above all the other chords. I'll try to keep them all together. So I'm gonna put that down an octave so it's more in line with all these chords. And then the next thing I did was I usually look for a note that can go straight through and not change. And that was this guy. And it sounds good through the chords. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to take this last one and just line it up with those because that note sounds good when played with every chord. You can't really go wrong with it. So now if I play my chords, trick number two is about keeping your chords interesting over the duration of your song by changing the rhythm of them over time. In this song, I started off with a chord progression that sounds like this. And then I had to keep them interesting and build on them. So I duplicated the chords and then I just stuck an arpeggiator on it down here and they sound like this. And then together. And then that still wasn't enough because when I got to the bridge, I still needed them to be interesting and then into the drop, I needed the chords to change. So I added another rhythm of the same chords, but you could see I broke up the rhythm like that, and these chords sound like this. When you change the rhythm of the chords and you layer it on the original chords or the basic form of the chords, which is what I started out with, you get a more interesting sound, and the listener's probably sitting there like, yo, this is really picking up, I like this. I can't wait to see where this track goes. Trick number three, always use the bottom note of your chord progression as your bass line and then change the sound of it. So with this chord progression here, I have my bottom notes that sound like this. They bass well with the chord progression. So what I had to do is I had to copy these and change the sound of them to keep the break of this song really interesting and I needed a bass line for the drop and I used the same exact note. So what I did is I copied those bottom notes and I pasted them here in their own sub bass region. That's the same exact notes, uh, just a couple octave changes to keep the sub bass where it has to be but essentially they are the same exact notes. When they come together with the chords, it sounds really big and full, and those bass notes are right where they should be because we use the bottom notes of the chords. Trick number four, use automation to keep your chords interesting. Automation adds movement and there's always room to add movement to your chord. So what I like to do is automate the cutoff of my chords and add some movement around the transition areas. 
So that would be at the end of eight bars or 16 bars. And then we could just open it up there a little bit and then open it up there a little bit. I'm gonna show you the effect of this. So the chords are really low and cool and vibey. And then toward the end of the transition, they'll sneak up on you and open up a little bit. And then when you pair those, with other sets of chords in different rhythms, remember trick number two, you get a really cool effect. Like that. Super cool sounding. Any song, that'll work. I hope I just inspired you. Trick number five. When you are writing chords and when you're writing songs, give yourself a couple chord options to play with so that you have enough material to write an entire song and make it interesting. To give you an idea of how I do that is I usually start out with a simple chord progression. And then I start listing options for layers that I think would sound good. So this layer here sounds like this. And that would be a nice layer of chords for say the bridge or something. And then I'll throw in another layer with a different rhythm and this will help my chords stay interesting. And then finally, I always throw on that extra layer that I don't know if I'm gonna use, but if I need it, it's there, which is gonna be the ARP. Just like that, I have enough material to start a song and not have my chords just get stagnant while I build the rest of the song. So there you go guys, if you found this video helpful and you would like to professionalize your chord writing skill, along with all of the other skills that go into music production, enroll now in my six week EDM bootcamp. I left a link in the description below so you can check that out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.